So hello and welcome. My name is Martin and today I'm going to show you how you can create animations in Adobe Animate CC 2019 and specifically how you can work with classic twins in Adobe Animate. So first of all, I'm going to create my project and I'm going to put this, for example, 600 by 600 and I will hit create. Cool. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is just save my project somewhere. So I will uh, probably go to my desktop and I will create a folder, animate, animate tutorial, and I will save my file in there. Okay. Uh, so the first thing that I am going to do is I am going to create a very simple shape and it is going to be an oval tool. So I am going to create maybe blue shape and I'm going to do something like this. Cool. The next thing that I want to do is I want to make this a symbol because when we want to animate something, we need to create a symbol. So you can either go to modified and convert to symbol or hit F8. I will hit convert to symbol and I can name this that this is going to be blue and uh, just make, the, make sure that it, it is movie clip and hit OK. Cool. Uh, right now, uh, if you go to your library, in your library you have uh, this uh, symbol with name blue and for example you can drag it like this and so on, but I do not want this. Cool. So uh, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create new layer and on this new layer I'm going to one more time create a shape and right now this shape is going to be red for example okay and the reason why i am doing these uh, shapes is because i want to show you different uh, types of animation that we have in adobe animate okay and the same thing i am going to hit f8 i am going to call this to be red make sure it is movie clip and i will hit okay cool so uh, right now I am going to uh, rename my uh, layers, so I will double click in here and this is going to be blue and this is going to be red and I will just make uh, something like this so I have blue on the top and red on the bottom. Cool, so I want to create an animation and I want just my uh, shapes uh, to animate from left to the right. So I am going to maybe frame 50. I will hit F6 for the new keyframe on the red and I'm going to move it with my shift so I am going to stay uh, like this somewhere in here and I'm going to do the same thing for the blue so I will go uh, to the blue layer I will hit F6 and I'm going to move it in here fine so the next thing that I want to do is I want to uh, create the classic twin and the way how you can create classic twin is uh, wherever between your two keyframes, just uh, right click and choose create classic twin. Okay. And now we have an animation from left to the right. Uh, I will go back with my control Z because I want to show you that uh, if you have uh, two layers like this or as much layers as you want, what you can do is highlight it like this. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you highlight uh, one frame or you highlight many frames. All you need to do is highlight it, right click, con create classic twins. And right now we have do, we did this for the both of them. Okay, cool. So uh, right now, if I hit control enter uh, for testing, this can take a few seconds. Maybe I'm going to have an animation like this. And this animation is linear, so uh, nothing really cool. And I will go back. Uh, I will just uh, change my stage to some uh, some kind of uh, tint of the blue. It doesn't matter. So when I uh, test, I have I can see where is my canvas. Okay. So right now, what I wanted to wanted to show you is that if you click on the first keyframe on the red, uh, you have this classic ease and you have this icon edit easing. This little uh, pen or pencil or I don't know what it is and if you click uh, the graph uh, like this is going to appear 
And basically this graph uh, is showing you uh, that this is linear because it is straight line. And right now I would like to briefly try to explain what this graph means. So uh, from the bottom to the top, we have the percentages and this basically means how much of the animation has been done. So uh, if we are starting uh, in here on the left side and we are ending on the right side, uh, the 50% is in the middle, the 10% is uh, at the beginning and the 90% is uh, almost at the end. Okay, and here at the bottom from left to the right, we have our frames. So right now uh, we have like on the frame 10, on this frame 10 in here, uh, the 20% of the animation is going to be done. And on the frame 25 in the middle, 50% uh, uh, of the animation is going to be done. But what I can do is I can click in here and I can do something like this, for example. Okay, and I can do the same thing uh, with the top one and create something like this. And uh, right now what I did is uh, uh, I changed my animation and now my animation is not going to be linear. And my animation right now is going to start very, very, very slowly and at, at the end it is going to speed up. Okay, and basically uh, you can see that uh, when we are on the frame 10 in here, you can see that only, I don't know, three or four percent of the animation is done. And when we are on the frame 25, we are in the middle of the time, but only 10 percent of the animation is done. So basically, what does it mean that we are going to be on the frame 25, but this shape is going to move only very little bit. And then maybe from frame 40, uh, it is going to go from 40% uh, to frame 50 to 100%. So in this very little time, it is going to go more than half of the animation. Okay. Uh, hopefully this makes sense. Uh, it is going to make sense if you try to do this few times. So I will hit save and apply. I will hit control enter. And right now you can see that uh, the blue is linear and the red is starting very slowly and speeding up. Okay. So hopefully you can see this animation and uh, I'm going to show you one more. So I will create one more layer and right now I'm going to create uh, one more shape and this time this is going to be a green shape and I'm going to place it at the bottom like this. And approximately like so. And again, I'm going to uh, hit F8 for uh, converting to the symbol. I can call this to be green and I will hit OK. And again, I will go to frame 50. I will hit F6 for the new keyframe and I will with my shift move it to the right. And again, I will uh, go anywhere in here. I will right click and I will create classic twin. Uh, and again, I will click on my first uh, keyframe. I will go to this icon and right now I am going to do something different. I am going to make something like this. And this animation basically means uh, the opposite of what we made with the red one. So we are going to start really, really, really fast and in the end we are going to slow down. Okay. And uh, Again, I'm going to show you that uh, uh, from frame zero to frame five, we are going to have 40% uh, of the animation done. And then in the rest 45 frames, the rest of the 60% of the animation is going to be done. And you can see that on the frame 25, so when we are in the middle, the more than 90% of the animation, I can change it to exactly 90 like this. So on frame 25, 90% of the animation is going to be done. And then from uh, frame 25 to frame 50, the rest of the, uh, the, the rest 10% is going to be done. 
okay again hopefully it makes sense i will again hit save and apply and i will hit ctrl enter and now you can see that my green start fast and slow down at the end okay and you can see that uh, this move uh, it looks just much better than the classic linear move okay but it depends specifically on what do you want to do cool uh, so the next thing that I want to show you just uh, a little bit uh, for your information is uh, sometimes you want to uh, hide your layer for example uh, let me let me change this to the green and for example I would like to uh, hide my red and hide my blue okay and I just want to test my green and if I hit Control enter you can see that my uh, red and my blue are still in there and the reason is that uh, if you go to your file and if you go to your publish settings there is an option to include hidden layers and this is uh, checked by default so if i uncheck this and i will cl click ok right now if i hit ctrl enter i am going to have only my green one okay or whichever i uh, will show uh, I just wanted to show you uh, because right now what I am going to do is I am going to hide them okay and I'm going to uh, show you more so I will create new layer and right now I'm going to create a shape and right now it is going to be a rectangle and this rectangle is going to be I don't know purple and I'm going to draw it somewhere in here like so cool and again what I need to do is hit F8 create symbol and uh, this I can call uh, purple I misspelled it doesn't matter it is in the library and this is it, it doesn't matter and uh, again I'm going to uh, go to the frame 50 I will hit F6 for the new keyframe I will move this to the right and uh, I'm going to do something more so I will hit uh, Q and uh, I will rotate this little bit like so and again I will uh, create classic twin and so now I have this animation where uh, I have something like this and I will show you uh, that when this is linear it looks like this and I think that this is not pretty cool so I will close this one and I am going to create some cool animation so what I can do is again uh, click uh, edit easings and uh, we did uh, something like this before okay like this or we did the opposite we did something like this okay right now what I want to do is I want to I will reset this and I want to create uh, this kind of curve this is called the S curve because it kind of look like S and uh, what does it mean is basically it is going to start slowly then it is going to speed up and then again it is going to slow down and basically if you are working with the graphs uh, all you need to remember is when this is going to be steep it is going to be faster and when it is not going to be steep it is going to be slower and again I will just try to explain for some of you who might not really get this by frame 20 only 20% of the animation is done and then from frame 20 to frame uh, 30 these 10 frames uh, will be like 60% uh, of the animation in 10 frames okay and again at the end it is going to slow down so I will hit save and apply and I will hit ctrl enter and you can see that we have animation like this and I think that this looks just much better okay than the previous one and I will close this and uh, of course we have an option to make this only a little bit like this or to make it uh, extreme like it was before so now if I hit save, save and apply and I will hit ctrl enter it is going to be there but not as much this looks almost like linear with very little easing okay so I will close this and uh, what I want to show you right now is that 
so far I was uh, showing you how you can create your own custom one is. But uh, there are these options. Uh, if you cl click on my is, there is a no is, and uh, there is this easy in, easy out, and easy in out. Okay, so easy in basically means uh, this one. Uh, I will go to maybe this quart, and uh, this is uh, the one which is uh, starting slowly and accelerating at the end. Okay, so easy in basically means that in the beginning it is going to be eased. So easy out is the exact opposite and uh, it is starting fast and slowing down at the end and easy in out is what I showed you with the rectangle starting slow, going fast, ending slow. And uh, uh, in here we have these uh, options. I don't know these names, there are the just random names, I think. But you have like uh, options to have uh, very little is, little more is, little more is, even more is, and some options like this, okay? And you can play with this. Uh, there is also this bounce, but uh, I'm going to show you how you can create your own custom bounce because this can be kind of tricky to handle, okay? But you can play with this. And we have the same thing with uh, easy out and we have easy, uh, same thing with easy in out. And you can also create your custom and uh, your custom is uh, saving your easings uh, in here. Okay, but uh, I think that you do not need to uh, create your custom ease. All you need to do is understand your easing as they are. Okay, cool. So uh, again, I'm going to hide this one. And now I'm going to show you how you can create a ball bouncing. Okay, so one more time I will create new layer. I will create a shape. I will take maybe, I don't know, uh, some kind of red color, but something like this. And I will create uh, something like this as a ground. Okay, and I will even call this to be ground. Okay, like so. And the next thing that I am going to do is I am going to create a ball. So again, I will hit a uh, new layer. Don't forget to put everything to the new layer. And uh, it is going to be, I don't know, a uh, blue color like this. And I will create my ball. Cool. And uh, again, I will go to my ball. I will hit F8. This time I am going to call this to be ball. And I will hit OK. Cool. And this is going to be just rectangle, so we have all of our names. Cool. So uh, I already uh, made the movie clip from the ball, and I will have to rename this to the ball. And right now, what I want to do is I want to expand my ground, okay? Because right now we have only uh, 50 frames, but I would like to have much more frames. So I will go maybe to frame, I don't know, 110 on the uh, layer ground and I will hit F5 or F6. F6 is going to give me new keyframe and F5 is going to give me new frame. So if I hit F5, it gives me new frame and the, uh, the difference between keyframe and frame is like the frame, uh, I can't change uh, the position of this frame, but it doesn't matter because I do not want to move this one. Okay, and uh, right now what I'm going to do is on my ball, I will go maybe to frame 20, I will hit F6, and I will move this down. Uh, and I'm holding shift, and I will put it like this. Okay, and then I will go maybe to frame uh, almost 40, maybe 38, 39, I don't know. I will hit F6 and I will put this up like so, okay? And uh, so right now I have my keyframes in here and what I can do is I can highlight it like this. So I am going to create the classic twins between these two keyframes and these two keyframes. I will right click and I will choose create classic twins, okay? And now we are going to have just basic movement like this. And I will hit Control Enter 
and you can see that this movement is linear and this is probably not how the ball is jumping okay so right now what i want you to do is before i will show you try to think for one minute how we are going to be doing this okay just to exercise your mind okay you can stop the video but if you don't want uh, it does, doesn't matter i'm going to show you so i will click on this uh, first keyframe and i will go to my edit easings and uh, what we need to do right now. So imagine that we have a ball, for example, in the, in the hand, and we are going to drop the ball. And uh, you should know, probably, from the physics, that when uh, things are falling down, they are accelerating. So it is going to look something like this. Because uh, the ball is going to start slowly and as the uh, times go, it is going to go faster and faster and faster. And you can see the steeper it is, the faster it is. So like this, we are getting from slow to faster, faster, and then we will hit ground. So I will hit save and apply. So we have something like this, okay? And then I will go to the next keyframe. And what is going to happen when this bounce back? So when the, it was uh, falling, it uh, accelerated, and when it hit ground, it had a uh, high speed. And when it is going to bounce back, it is going to have this motion, so it is going to be fast, and when it is going to go up, the gravity is going to slow it down, so it will go something like this, okay? So, uh, hopefully it makes sense. Uh, I'm going to try to explain one more time, but I will hit save and apply and I will show you control enter that indeed we have bounce like this. Okay. Boom. So one more time, this keyframe is going slowly and accelerating because of the gravity like so. And the next keyframe, uh, when the, when the ball hit the ground, it hit the ground uh, with a high speed and that, that's why it bounced back with the high speed and it is slowly uh, decreasing the speed as it is going up. Okay, and uh, we can continue. I can go to uh, frame maybe 58. Okay, and uh, I started from uh, 1 to 20. Then I went from 20 to... I didn't, I didn't go to the 40 because... Uh, it should be a little bit less and I am even going to move this one a little bit because uh, when it bounces, it is not going to go uh, to the same height as it was at the beginning, okay? So it, it started in here and uh, now it is not going to be as high, okay? And uh, oh, hopefully it makes sense. And uh, now again I will put this down like so and I will create one more keyframe in here and I will put this up, but uh, less than the keyframe before, okay? Somewhere here. And again, I will uh, highlight it and I will create classic twin. And I'm going to do the same thing. So now we are at the top and again, what is going to happen is uh, the ball is going to start to fall down and again, it is going to be slow at the beginning and accelerate the ground like so. So save, save and apply. So it is falling down. And again, the same thing when we hit the ground, uh, uh, it is going to accelerate like so. And then it is going to go slowly at the top. And I will hit save and apply. And I will hit control enter. And indeed you can see that we have a bounce like this. Cool. Uh, one more thing that I'm going to show you is uh, I'm going to create one more bounce. So I will go uh, to frame maybe, I don't know, somewhere here. And uh, I will move this down like so. And then I will go to frame somewhere here, F6, and I will move this up. 
cool. And again, I will highlight it and create classic twins. And so uh, this keyframe uh, is uh, from the top to the bottom. Uh, the same thing is this keyframe. This keyframe is from the top to the bottom. Okay, and this keyframe is also from the top to the bottom. And what we can do uh, is it would be fine if all of our uh, graphs are the same. They don't need to be the same, but it could be cool. So what I can do is I can go to the uh, first graph. I can click in here. I can right click to this point. I can choose copy and then uh, I'm not going to change this one, but I want to change this one. And on this one, instead of making the custom one, custom one more time, I can right click and choose paste. And I'm going to have the, the same animation, exact same animation as on the first one. And I will hit save and apply. And I can do the same thing from the, for the last keyframe. Okay, so this keyframe, this keyframe and this keyframe, every second keyframe is bouncing back. So they are going to have the same animation. So I can click, I can go in here, I can copy, hit cancel, go in here and hit paste like so. And save and apply. And I will hit control enter. And now you can see that we have a bounce like this. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, uh, one thing that I didn't like is uh, this uh, last keyframe is too high. Okay, it was so unnatural, unnatural, I, I don't know, but I will put it a little bit down like so. Okay, so I will hit control enter and it is like so. Because every bounce, it should be uh, going down a little bit. Okay, so uh, we could continue to create bounces until it would uh, stop. But the basic principle is uh, this uh, space between these keyframes should uh, be lower and lower every bounce. Okay, I didn't make maybe uh, every single bounce. It doesn't as much matter. But if you want to create a good looking bounce, every bounce should be like, uh, I, I can show you something like this. Uh, if you go to the view and you go to rulers or you can use the shortcut control alt shift r <laughs> a really long one but the rulers uh, this is going to give you rulers and what you can do is uh, give a ruler to the first height then go to the second keyframe and give the ruler to the second height and then go here and go put it on the next one and you can play like this and you can see how you are doing and so on. Okay, so you can do something like this if you want. And I will get rid of them quickly like so. Cool. Uh, the next thing that you can do is uh, I didn't make this ground uh, movie clip so far, but I am going to and I am going to show you one little thing. So I will hit F8 and I will call this ground and I will hit OK. And right now I am able to animate this. And uh, what I can do is uh, on the frame when the ball hits the ground, I will hit F6. OK, I will go to the next frame. So I can just click on the next frame and hit F6 one more time and move this little bit down with my arrows like three times. And then I will hit one more time F6. It is going to give me new keyframe. And I will put it up again with my arrows like this. And basically what I did is uh, when the ball hit the ground, I moved the ground three, um, very little bit down. Uh, I hit uh, arrow three time. And then I put it up, back up again. Okay. And uh, when I hit control enter, we are going to have something like this. Okay. And I can do the same thing for the rest. So I can go in here and I will hit F6. Okay. Then I will hit F6 one more time. I will uh, put it down a little bit. I will 
put f6 one more time, put it up, and uh, the same thing on the last one, I will hit f6, f6 one more time, move it down, f6, move it up, and I will hit control enter. And now you can see that we have the effect like this. Okay, cool. And the last thing is that uh, I want to get rid of uh, these, uh, these frames from the ground. So what I can do is I can highlight them and I can use the shortcut Shift F5 and this is going to remove my frames. And now my animation is going to uh, be like this and it is going to be looping like this. Okay, so uh, basically this is it. Uh, hopefully you uh, like this video and you learned something. Uh, if yes, just uh, um, consider to hit the like. I would really appreciate it. And if you are interested in more videos like this, uh, consider to hit the subscribe. I am hopefully going to uh, create more videos about Adobe Animate, maybe about After Effects and so on. So yeah, mm, thank you for watching and have an amazing day. See you.